anything's possible. Um, before we get on to our hot takes, a special segment for Alberson, which is will they, won't they? Will Alberson Phoenix go to World Tour in 2023? Now, obviously, they can walk in. We've, we've mentioned the point system ad nauseum. They're ranked, I don't know, sixth or seventh across the three-year cycle or they're they're clearly above they're well in the top 18 and even if they have the season from hell with no mvdp they've still got melia phillips and they are going to be eligible to walk into the world tour if they want to if they have applied for 2023 but the rudolph brothers have been very elusive about confirming whether they have or haven't applied which frankly i don't really know the tactics or strategies why do you what do you think, Benji? Do you think they've they've applied and want to actually go into World Tour in the next three year cycle? Well, I'll be honest about it. I've had like seven people at this point say that it's a uh, an invisible secret that they've already applied, apparently. But I can't confirm okay. that one hundred percent without actually knowing it myself. So it's all external sources, but it's people that actually are in the business of journalism and cycling. So if they're lying about it, that would be pretty sad. But uh, so if seven other people all disconnected from each other are saying the exact same thing, I feel like it's likely that it's the case that they are going to World Tour. Do I believe that they should? Yes, I think they should. And the reason is simple. They are currently in the first position of the Pro Conti, Pro Tour, second division in cycling, basically. That allows them those benefits of choosing the access to all the races they want to ride without getting a World Tour license. They also have like, lighter rules when it comes to minimum salary and so forth although i'm not sure they even uh use that thread to their advantage to be honest but i do believe that they have that spot now but can you trust the uci of not changing the rules when it comes to that first spot exactly. in the next three-year cycle i don't trust the uci in that i would want to secure my access to the tour de france by being in that world tour division Obviously, it's going to cost money, but let's be honest, Alps and Phoenix has gotten quite a few new sponsors, including that, the Koenig and so forth. With Van der Poel in your team, you're not going to have too much trouble getting sponsors, I would expect, uh, except for the, what was it, that video they did? If they make a lot of more videos like that one, the advertisement for the Koenig, <laughs> Jesus Christ. If you haven't the seen the that yet, you should, you should check it out. Yeah. Uh, so basically, no, if they have yeah. a... <laughs> So I don't think they'll have trouble to pay for a World Tour license personally. And I believe that they're strong enough to definitely make the move to World Tour. And I think it I would be... I don't know about that. I think they would get a lot of criticism if they would stay to benefit from that first spot in the second division. I think you've touched on it there. And, and that criticism is related to your earlier point about the UCI, is that this system cannot continue like this. And the UCI surely knows that, that you cannot have a team. The point of the this whole system is that it creates a promotion relegation system so that the best Pro Conti team is able to move up to World Tour. And currently, Alps and Phoenix have a better license than the World Tour teams. They pay less. I don't know. I think World Tour costs like 250K euro. I'm making that up maybe. Yeah, but- minimum 150. I checked it the other day. Okay. So you got to pay a fair chunk of change, which is that's one, that's a rider right there, or a decentish rider, or you know, a strong neo pro. Pay that, and then they they can turn down invites. Catalonia, Alpecin are like, you know what? Our sponsors don't really care about Catalonia. We're not going. And going to races costs money, and yep. having a team that is capable of going to them also costs money. So this system cannot continue, and that's why I think Benji's alluded to it. I agree. There's a decent chance the UCI amend this system and maybe change it into a use it or lose it, where if you don't apply to be World Tour at the end of the cycle, well, you don't get access to this special invitation system. So, and what what if MVDP is injured, Benji, and they then can't get wildcard invites in the next cycle? Yeah, quite possible in that situation. But to be honest, they have enough riders in their team that they could probably survive without Vanderpool, to be honest. But in all honesty, another aspect to that is now there's the fact that we currently have had 19 World Tour teams, including Quebec last year, and that's moving towards 18, which apparently, according to the current rules, makes it so that two riders will have that benefit that Alpecin now has, two teams will have that benefit that Alpecin now has in the next year. If that is the case, then two teams have more benefits than all the World Tour teams. 
That can't consistently <laughs> happen in the coming years. Something has to change on that aspect. And therefore, there's always a danger that the UCI changes it. And if that happens, then the first person or the first team in that ranking that is benefiting from that is going to be very sad to know that they're stuck in a three-year cycle in Pro Conti and might not have those benefits in the coming years. So, Alberson, let's say they do go World Tour, Benji, in, in the next three-year cycle, like 2023, suddenly Alberson Phoenix is a World Tour team. There's all the admin and business stuff behind it, whatever, that's fine. Nothing really changes in terms of uh, the top race invitations. They're already going to all the monuments. They're already going to all three Grand Tours they have the last year and they will this year and they will the next year. So what, what would you change if you were the Ruthoff brothers? If you were Alberson, would you suddenly, Benji, be doing different signings? Or would you double down on what they've been doing, which is signing the likes of Melier and Philipsons and just just honing in on those Belgian races? And then, I mean, Jay Vine is a, sort of a weird one because he got the contract initially through Zwift and then they extended him because he got did quite well last year. Uh, Bayer as well is a bit of a, a different one. Or would you suddenly be like, okay, we need, we need to have a team for Lombardia now? I have an issue with the signing of Mareshko because of this. Because we're talking about the fact that Mareshko is going to be the guy that feels like he could go to the likes of a Tour of Turkey and smaller one-day races that Phillips and Merlier are too good for to also take UCI points. But if they go to World Tour next year, that's completely irrelevant. Like, exactly. yes, it's still manageable or useful that that guy will go to those smaller races. But with Merlier, Phillips and also the likes of uh, a Vanderpool in your team, he's going to have to get lucky to get in the top five of the riders. And I think it's a top five riders that count for the UCI points, right? Top 10. Yeah, top 10 riders. Oh, count to UCI. well, he's probably going to get in the top 10. <laughs> no, he will for sure. 100%. He yeah. would easily get in top 10. Um, I agree. Like he, and I don't think he's that cheap, although he, you know, he was on Vini and that he might not have had much negotiating leverage. It's a two-year deal. It's not like a four-year deal, but still, I agree with Benji's point. Like, it becomes less important and you need to then have a squad instead of the manpower that you're able to deny the Catalonia invite and go to a different race. Yeah. You have to go to Catalonia. You have to go to Basque country. You have to go to all these races and Fortunato. I, I presume I actually, I wrote, I, I wrote past the whole of Yolo Cometa today. I think Fortunato was there on the, uh, Mongo descent from Javier to, to Denia. <laughs> um, they were, they were doing photos and stuff. I, was, I felt bad for Benji uh, not being there. At the time. <laughs> anyway, sorry, that was my little anecdote. Uh, Fortunato, no, no. Yeah, but exactly. Like, Come on. There's a risk, Benji, when a team when teams try to sign some GC riders, et cetera, and it's like, why not just double down on what they're good at? And I think that's what they will do. But you don't need the Moreshkos of the world in, in the future. But, yeah, how do you – how do you think the, now into the hot takes, Benji? Um, we, by the way, for the record, I think they're going world tour in twenty twenty three. Is that your your gut feeling, Benji? Yeah, I believe that Alpecin is world tour in twenty twenty three. Okay, 